Well, hello, everybody. Uh, today, we're talking about naturally supernatural healing. Um, one of the amazing things about, a, about being a naturally supernatural Christian is that you are invited to participate in the healing ministry of Jesus, both within your heart, but also within the lives of other people. We know that from start to finish, the Bible says Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Nearly one third of the gospels just simply describe Jesus' healing ministry as he healed the sick of all their diseases, as he ministered to people's broken hearts, he restored their lives. This is at the very heart of why Jesus came. And one of the things that he wants to do is to really once again, restore this experience of us being healed and God using this to bring healing prayers that bring healing to other people. We know that not everyone we pray for physically is, is healed, but we do know that healing is in the kingdom. That when Jesus came, he said that part of the kingdom being at hand was healing. In Luke chapter 10, verse nine, he commanded the disciples, Heal the sick um, who are there and tell them that the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick. Interesting that we are called to do everything that Jesus commanded them to do. That includes bringing healing to the sick. But in the same way as we know that Jesus brought completely victory over sin, that doesn't mean that necessarily that we're all sinless. None of us are. But it does mean that through the work of Jesus Christ, victory over sin is within our reach. It's available. And in the presence of God, healing of our spirit, mind, and soul is something that we can ask for, we can expect, and we can pray for others to receive. Um, healing, a couple of thoughts about it. Number one is healing is not just for our bodies but it is for our whole person. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, where it, it talks about how God wants to, uh, to bless our whole spirit, our whole soul, and our whole body to be preserved, blameless. Healing is something God has for relationships, for emotions. He has it for our, our mental capacities. And he has healing for our spirit. In fact, one of the most important things to realize is that the one healing that is guaranteed in this life is spiritual healing. Being born again is the greatest miracle a human being ever experiences. Having our relationship with God healed is, is God's ultimate healing that as we receive it, it flows into other areas. I think all the way through when healing is mentioned, you'll see the connection between our spirit, our soul, and our body. For example, in Psalm 103, in those first five verses, David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all my sins, who heals my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness. You see that healing begins with experiencing the forgiveness of our sins. That easily flows into God beginning to heal our diseases and to restore our soul. I remember Tony Campolo telling a story about a woman who said she had been estranged from her father and hadn't seen him for years, but heard he was, he was dying of cancer. She didn't want to even go see him, but God convicted her. She had become a Christian. So she went and visited him, and in that time, she forgave him. And something amazing happened. He was saved. He accepted Christ. And he, even for a while, he went home and he was, he was starting to do better. And she was just so excited as she told Tony. And he asked her, well, well did he get healed? And, and the truth was that he had actually ended up dying and going to be with the Lord. And she said, you know, he, even though he was never healed, he was made whole. Meaning his heart, his spirit was well. 
a Bible word that describes holistic healing is shalom, which means the wholeness of God, the prosperity of God, spirit or soul or mind. It's what something like what something God wants to give. And what's so powerful about that is that the body of Christ is, is God's unique delivery system for ministering healing at every level. How we praise God for doctors and hospitals, and God certainly uses them in important ways. But isn't it interesting? God doesn't want people who are hurting to just get treatment. He wants them to get transformation. He wants their character to be healed, their way of thinking, their, their social life, their, their mental and emotional life, their connectedness. And God has given the church that special gift to touch people. Again, not only to pray for their physical, to serve them, but to connect them and minister to the spirit. That's why I get so excited about the idea that Heart for the World is a healing community, no matter what the hurt or ailment that is existing. These different areas, spirit, soul, and body, also quite overlap. You know, people could be healed physically and yet still be extremely broken spiritually. God always wants those to overlap because one deeply affects the other. I remember when my mentor, John Wimber, he had a man who was instantly healed of cancer in his service. And the doctors reported everything was beautiful. Well, about six months later, the man began to have the same symptoms. And he came to one of the pastors and and they prayed, well, what's going on here? And they just sensed to ask him that there was someone he needed to forgive. And they asked him, and sure enough, he, he hated his brother. And they said, sir, you need to forgive your brother. And he says, I will never forgive him. I hate him. Well, within three weeks, the man was dead. The healing he had had received in his body was also connected with whether he would receive healing in his spirit and both affect the other. Now here are some keys I wanna look at as we apply this message about ministering healing, receiving it ourselves, and ministering it to others. And I'd like to read this verse in James chapter five, uh, beginning with verse 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Just some observations about how to receive and minister healing uh, to one another. Let me just give you these four Ps. The first is a perspective. Notice what he says. When you're going to pray, he says, he says when someone's sick, the first thing they should do is call for prayer. A lot of people, the last thing they do, after they go to the doctor and their medicine doesn't work, maybe they finally pray. But the perspective that James gives us is the first thing you should do is pray, expect it for a miracle. We're we're to pray in faith. He says that very clear. The prayer of faith, what does that mean? It's a prayer that says, I fully expect God's going to move. God's going to do something great as we agree together and pray. It's a a prayer that's, again, connected with with our spiritual growth process. One of the important things you see here is he says, he says, go to the elders, be connected to the church, confess your sins to one another. It's so interesting. He, he, again, he's tying spiritual healing as well as physical healing together. He's revealing the fact that we may have issues not just with our body, but but with our soul. We may have a woundedness. There may be something else God is wanting uh, to heal in us. One of the things I believe with all my heart that the journey of being a Christian is a journey of healing. God is continually trying to reveal unhealed places of our heart, especially. 
All of us have wounds from growing up. We have wounds of rejection or grief or insecurity, whatever. These often lay hidden underneath layers and layers of denial or defensiveness. What we find is that as we begin to to grow as Christians, God allows these things to be exposed. You see, an unrevealed place in your heart is an unhealed place in your heart. And he often uses relationships. For example, you get married, you thought you were really a well person, and all of a sudden the intensity of that relationship hurts come to the surface. Now you have one of two choices. You you can get healed or you can get hardened. But God wants to use these different things because all of us are somewhere today in need of healing. Something's wounded. Maybe you had a bad church experience. You don't fully trust the church. That's something God wants to heal. Maybe your self-esteem was crushed by an ex-spouse. That's something still God wants to heal. What God says is that healing happens best in community. It's not just a prayer, but it's praying for one another. It's community where we confess our struggles. I can guarantee you one way to experience more healing is if we have close relationships with other Christians in which we regularly tell one another, you know, this is what I'm repenting of lately, and this is who I'm forgiving. As we confess sin, as we repent, we open all kinds of doors for God's healing presence to go deeper into our life. One other thing about perspective is is to see that healing is, is not because God's punishing you for your sickness. I love John 9, 3 that it says, this man who was born blind, he did not, wasn't born blind because he sinned or his parents sinned but it was so that the works of God might be displayed. Sickness is not God punishing you. So sometimes we get these very strange religious ideas. Sickness happens. Sin could be something that prevents sometimes from healing. But sickness happens because we're in a fallen world and we have broken bodies. And when that sickness comes, our Our perspective should be God's going to show his glory through this. I'm expecting, trusting him. A second P is prescription. You know, first thing, when we're praying for someone to be healed, we're always encouraging them. We're going to believe God for your healing together. But the prescription part of it is to recognize that sometimes the Lord wants to reveal things that are blocking healing. Sometimes when we pray for people, we say, Lord, show us as we pray, is there, is there certain things that you're doing that we need to understand? When Jesus prayed for the sick, there were different things he addressed. Some cases there were sins. He said, you're forgiven. Some cases there were demonic strongholds. He cast out a spirit of infirmity. He recognized that the sickness was being caused by a demon and that needed to be removed. There could be other reasons sometimes just deep regret or guilt or or resentment. So many times the whole healing process is, is, Holy Spirit, show us not only that we can be healed, but is there things that you're doing in us that you want to let us to let go of as we pray about a healing in our life? I remember praying with a lady one time who was severely depressed and As I prayed for her, I just kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, ask her about her baby. And I asked her, she said, well, I don't have any children. So I prayed some more, and the Lord told me to ask her about her baby. Finally, she broke down crying, and she told me, I don't have a baby, but I had an abortion. And she told me how she lived with guilt. Once we ministered to that, it was amazing. Quickly, the depression left her life. God often is doing a work deep within us. Sometimes the healing is from soul ties. I I use that word because sometimes we're in a bondage of a relationship with a person that's negative or destructive, either in our present or our past. We've never broken that bond. And that's part of the healing process. A third key to healing is God's presence. Um, It's the presence of the Lord that heals us. In one passage, it speaks of Jesus and it says, and the, present, the Lord's presence was there to heal. 
one of the things we're so excited about in our services and habitation and other things is that as we sense the presence of the Lord, we receive his faith, his word, his, his anointing for healing. It, it's in the presence of the Lord. Someone said that healing is not the absence of sickness or regret. or res- It's the presence of the Holy Spirit replacing those things with his love, with his grace. When God heals someone of shame, it's not that he erases their past. He overwhelms the past shame with the reality of his present forgiveness, his goodness. How does God heal anxiety? As we give it to him, he overwhelms it with peace. How does he heal fear? The perfect love of God is revealed to us stronger. Many times as we minister, we will suddenly sense, wow, the Lord's moving. Sometimes you'll just see it on a person's face, the glow, the tenderness. God's presence is coming to replace some area of their life where there is a brokenness, there is a hurt. Sometimes the healing, uh, God's presence, comes through literally the the warmth of of a person, a hug, a touch. I remember one time grieving seriously a loss in in our church, of people leaving the church, and during a greeting time, someone just came and hugged me, a brother in Christ. He says, God wants you to know that, that, that you're not condemned. He, suddenly, I don't even know what it was, but this whole shadow and guilt thing on me just broke. It was the presence of God in a brother's touch. One of the most huge things about healing and why I'm preaching this in terms of life groups is we are all called to be wounded healers. We're all in a process of being healed. And as we pray for one another, he says, That's how the healing starts to happen. As we confess our faults, as we admit the need for prayer, more and more of his presence will come upon our community and more and more people will be healed. The last thing I'll mention here is just the P, persistence. Often God's healing is not instant. Many times it's progressive. God, uh, here James immediately gives Elijah as an illustration. And he says, what what happened with Elijah? He kept praying. He was praying for rain. It didn't come at first. Then he kept praying, eventually a little cloud, and then eventually a downpour. Many times when we pray for healing, the results aren't instantaneous. The gifts of healing, a gift of miracle is sudden. A gift of healing can just be the acceleration of a natural healing process, or it can be God restoring us. A lot of times people just give up. What's impressive to me is that when Paul was praying about an affliction called his thorn of the flesh in 2 Corinthians 12, it says he prayed three times until the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient. In other words, some people say, I'm going to pray uh, until I hear the Lord say yes. Paul said, I'm going to pray until I hear the Lord say no. I'm going to expect to be healed until God says, I'm not healing you that way. Jesus would pray, and sometimes it would be progressive. One time he prayed for a man's eyes, and he says, do you see? And and the man said, well, I see, but it's like trees walking. And Jesus prayed for him again. We shouldn't be ashamed to ask. Sometimes those prayers will turn into just prayers of praise and thanksgiving. But we should come with great expectation that it's God's will to heal and and to do it from all levels, spirit, soul, and body. My hope for you today as you gather that you will let the Holy Spirit show you something that needs to be healed. Maybe it's your anger. Maybe it's your frustration. Maybe it's disappointment. Or maybe it's a bad knee or a headache. Expect the presence of the Lord as you pray one for another to be healed. Amen.